Hi, I'm Amy, and today I'm going to help you make a simple fur muff to keep your hands warm when you're outside at events in the wintertime. So join me, will you? A simple muff is a rectangle of fake fur or real fur that can be of any size or shape that you want it to be. For example, the shape of this fur was dictated by the fact that it was a second-hand piece of fake fur that I bought at a silent auction. This piece of fur is 22 and a half inches wide and 17 inches deep. The lining has that same dimension. As you can see, it's the same size. The pocket is nine and a half inches wide by 11 inches deep. I've got a bit of a cheater fix on this pocket because this was a used curtain and I've cut the side of the pocket that's going to be the opening along an edge that's already been finished. So that saves me a step. The first thing that I'm going to do is press the edges of the pocket under where I'm going to attach it to the lining of the muff. This is the lining of the muff. And as you can see, I've already attached a piece of Velcro to it in order to make a closure for the pocket. The pocket is gonna be placed right here so that when I put the Velcro on the pocket, it will match up to the Velcro on the muff, and then you'll have a way to close your pocket. So that if you have this dangling from your arm, whatever is in your pocket won't fall out. So now I'm gonna attach the Velcro to the pocket. As you can see, I have placed the pocket in place and sewed it down. So now the inside lining of the muff is done. If I want to use my pocket when I have this on, that's the Velcro opening. That's what's going to keep my cell phone and my wallet in place. You may wonder why I didn't use a zipper. Zippers get caught in things, um, and I can see very easily that a zipper would get caught in this very thin lining, and I didn't want that to happen, so I went with Velcro. The next thing I have to do is I have to press this seam down, and then I'm going to sew it down and this will help later when we're doing the actual construction of the muff, putting the ends of the muff together. So I'm gonna go do that. Now that the ends of the lining are sewn, are pressed, they're gonna be sewn, and then we will be able to attach the lining to the muff. Now that we've got both ends are finished. And we've got our pocket on the lining. We're gonna attach the lining to the fur. This is the fur. We're gonna place the lining down, right sides to right side. The right side of the lining to the right side of the fur. Now, one thing we have to do when we're attaching these pieces is we have to make sure that we include the ribbon. This is the ribbon that's gonna go around your wrist when you're wearing the muff so that if you don't want to wear the muff on your hands anymore, you can hang it from your wrist. I suppose modernly, if you had a carabiner on your belt, you could hook this to a carabiner on your belt, but this is not modern. So, we're going to place this 
at the edge. And we're going to pin it into place. Now I'm gonna go back to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew these long edges together. And I'm gonna use something called a walking foot. Walking feet, I was, I was first introduced to a walking foot when I was quilting. Uh, a walking foot will help you sew bulky materials together without them getting all bunched up like they will tend to do. So I'm going to go use my walking foot to sew the muff ends together, or the muff long edges together. As you can see, I've sewn the long edges of the lining to the outside fur. As you can also see, it's really wonky. Now one of my manifesto rules is that you have to embrace the imperfection. Sewing with fur, unless you do it all the time, is not going to be really easy. It's Fur will creep and crawl and things will slide and they will go out of place even if they're pinned. And I'm letting you see this imperfection so you don't think that just because the things I make look really good, that they're really good all over the place, like inside. And I don't, I don't mind. I've seen enough vintage clothing and historic clothing in person to know that there's an awful lot of wonky going on behind the beautiful exterior. So wonkiness aside, now it's time to turn this right side out. All right, so here's our muff, right side out. And now we're gonna sew the ends of the fur, just the fur, together. This end will be sewn together. And as you can see, it's a little wider than the lining. That's okay, we don't want the lining to show. So the lining is going to pull in that circle just a little bit. So I'm going to go off to my machine and I'm going to sew this seam together. So I've pinned the fur together and I just want to emphasize that when you're sewing the fur together, you're not catching the lining in it. You're just sewing the fur right now. So the fur is now sewn together and we're so close to being done because the last step is going to be whip stitching the lining closed but first we're going to add a little bit of stuffing why because fake fur is not very warm it's warmer than nothing but it's still not very warm so what i'm going to do is i have some uh, Woving, I think. Roving, woving, roving. <laughs> the knitters out there are just gonna laugh at me. I'm, I have this wonderful wool from a friend in West Virginia. And I am going to take this and put it inside the muff. Try to make it even. It's not gonna be perfectly even, but it, I, again, it doesn't matter because this is gonna be on the inside and the fur is so bulky that you're not gonna see unevenness on the outside when you have the muff turned right side out. 
So just pull that wool apart and put it in there. And I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep going and doing the other side. So this is what the muff looks like from the inside now. Um, it kind of looks like I've stuffed it with a turkey or something. Now we're going to pin it together and whip stitch it closed. So this is what the muff looks like when it's pinned shut and now I'm going to do the final seam with a whip stitch. So now that I've got the lining sewn together and my pockets on, the only thing that there's left to do is to turn this right side out. So let's give it a try. This is why I didn't want to stuff it too full of, of wool because it would be hard to turn. But it's turned. It is indeed turned. And this is a spiffy little project. So as you can see, this is the finished product. You have a nice strap for your wrist if you want to carry it instead of wear it. As you saw, there's a nice pocket inside. This is easy to make. You don't need to spend money on a pattern and you can make it out of a large scrap of fur. I hope you liked today's project and I hope you join me again soon. Bye-bye.